Hello everyone and welcome back to Captives. My name is Wendy Grace. This four-part series created by ACT to Prevent Trafficking, or APT, is designed to animate a conversation in your classroom, your homes and communities about the issue of human trafficking. In our first three episodes, we looked at understanding and preventing human trafficking. In our final episode, under the title of Exposing Human Trafficking, we're going to look at how we can make sure that human trafficking is not hidden. We are delighted to be joined by Timothy Schmoss from Canada, who is an amazing sculptor. Timothy's large outdoor pieces can be found in St. Peter's Square in the Vatican, in Washington, and also in Dublin. As you will hear, Tib admits that he didn't know a lot about the issue when he was commissioned to create a piece on human trafficking, but he began to grapple with the issue and he ended up creating something truly special. Tim is interviewed from his studio in Canada by Sister Liz Murphy. You're an artist, Tim. You're a sculptor. And much of your work is already available in Ireland. I've enjoyed immensely seeing Bridget in Kildare. And one of the people involved in Kildare, Rita Minahan, is on our committee of APT as well. So very strong connections with Kildare, with Knock, and of course with St Moling in my native parish of St Mullins. But today as I talk to you, I'd like to talk to you about your wonderful sculpture, Let the Oppressed Go Free. Can you tell me something of your interest in that, your background around it, and how it came to be created, please? Well, thank you. And um, the Let the Oppressed Go Free I think it was perhaps my most challenging sculpture to date. I, uh, after creating the uh, very large 20 foot uh, bronze sculpture for St. Peter's Square called uh, Angels Unawares, which highlights the uh, refugees and migration experience around the world. Um, actually, I have a little model of it here, if you can see, I'm not sure if you can see it, but yeah, I was, this is a small model that uh, actually uh, was one of the steps before I created the big uh, piece. And it was a big subject matter. Cardinal Cherney at the Vatican, who's the undersecretary to Pope Francis on uh, the new Department of Migrants and Refugees, asked me to create a new sculpture uh, to bring attention to the migrants. And what I did was I created... Uh, in a sense, uh, a visual translation of Hebrews 13 to be welcoming to strangers, many have entertained angels unawares. And the idea was a crowd of refugees, migrants from all historical periods of time, including the Irish potato famine, woven like a tapestry on one boat, on one raft with an angel in the center, but you couldn't see the angel, his body or her body, um, you could only see the wings. So um, the wings became everyone's wings. So the idea of it being an interpretation of the scripture, Hebrews 13 too, was very effective. And because of the, the success of that piece, the angels unawares created massive awareness being installed in St. Peter's Square uh, thousands, if not millions of people have already seen it and had a moment to think about the migrant experience. When you see your Irish ancestor right beside a modern day refugee, uh, the message becomes powerful. So uh, Cardinal Cherney afterwards, after the piece was installed, asked me to um, think about doing another sculpture on the theme of human trafficking. I'm almost ashamed to say that I had very little knowledge about human trafficking. Very, very little. I was like, what's human trafficking? Uh, I went back to my studio and I started to research. And it's interesting because here I am um, living in Canada, close to Toronto. And it be I became aware almost instantly that human trafficking is something that is in a sense, right under my feet here in Canada. In fact, uh, there's a major highway very close around 12 minutes from me and that 
I learned was a massive uh, uh, kind of passageway for traffic people. I was shocked. I was stunned. And I felt that my, my knowledge or my, my uh, lack of knowledge was emblematic of, I think, everyone around the world. We have such a, a, a huge problem here just under our feet and no one knows about it. And so the idea of creating a sculpture that really gives that visual to the invisible uh, was something that I took hold of and poured every bit of creativity and, and muscle and energy to give an authentic representation to human trafficking. At night, I would look and I would research and I went in a sense down this rabbit hole, this abyss, this inferno of the horrors of this problem. And uh, in the daytime, I would work on models similar to the model that I just showed you about the, uh, uh, the Angels Unawares piece. In fact, I was halfway done my first model. And then I said to myself, thinking about that Browning poem, The Pied Piper of Hamlin, uh, Hamlin, I thought they are sucking our children underground. And I thought of the Pied Piper, the folk tale uh, that was uh, created uh, in another uh, historical period. But the subject matter seemed very much the same. It seemed that we are having this opening up this abyss and people are just following in and, and being sealed up and being forgotten. And so actually, I, I, after I, I thought of the idea of people being sucked underground, I stopped the original model that I was working on and I started to do what is now let the oppressed go free where you have the uh, Saint Paquita, who was a slave from a previous century, opening up the ground and letting modern day slaves free. The, 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 the idea was to take, to use sculpture as a weapon to make something very powerful, to make people think. And as I was working on it, it took me a year to be working on all the different uh, figures within it. And I wanted to give for the first time a real authentic representation what human trafficking was. One evening I came across a quotation from Pope Francis and he stated, human trafficking will always exist if it's kept underground. And in the morning I, I came to work on my sculpture where I have them coming out of the ground. I do believe that, that the, the whole project was uh, was guided by God in a sense. Um, and that just fueled me to put everything I had on the piece. The interesting thing about the sculpture with St. Paquita, she is the hero. She's the one that's opening up the ground and letting the oppressed go free. Um, the idea of having it 20 feet was finally, I think I could get an authentic and an accurate representation of who is being human trafficked. And it's not just the quintessential young girl scantily dressed with her hands in chains. It's a hard, hard uh, subject matter to give visual representation to. A lot of the posters do have the girl with the hands tied. Um, the problem with that is you're, you're losing the full depth of human trafficking within uh, not only our, our society, but the world at large. Human trafficking has many faces. Yes, it does have the sex worker, but it also has the girl next door or the boy next door. It also has the domestic worker. Um, it also has the, the child beggar. Um, it has so many different faces. It, it, is, it is so omnipresent within very much every sector of our society that in order to really show this authentically, I needed to do a big sculpture. So it was, it was a phenomenal uh, heart wrenching uh, experience. Literally when I was working on it at the end of the day, 
unlike some of my sculptures, like I, I'm just working on Mary and Tyre of Not. It just brings me so much happiness working on some of my Christian pieces. But this one, it was like I was punched in the gut after every evening working on it. And I would go home, regroup and come back on it. So, um, Timothy, it's a wonderful s- sculpture. I fell in love with it the minute I saw it. You've got over 100 women <clears throat> in the piece. And that's how you created it. But for people like our young people and our parents and for those of us trying to do something about uh, human trafficking, how would you advise us to approach it? Because I love in some of your other sculptures where I could sit down at Christ Church in Dublin and sit beside the sculpture of the homeless Jesus. I could sit on one of the seats of your Last Supper and be one of the 12, which would be, give me great pleasure as a woman to be one of the apostles in, in that sculpture. How would you advise us to approach it? Well, I think the first thing is, like Pope Francis mentioned, be aware and then care <laughs> in that order. Um, I, th- I think that... that uh, the the first thing is is to be aware how it is worked within our society and so i encourage people when the piece is done to really study all the different uh, poor souls that are represented on that piece be aware um understand how uh it is kind of embedded in some of our institutions like the pornography in, uh, institute, like the whole machine of, of uh, pornography uh, is, is so related to human trafficking. Um, and then realize that the internet is related to the pornography online. And so that's involved with it. And, and to care then, I think, is to, is to bring the attention to, to some of our politicians and demand some action. For instance, here in Canada, you have uh, uh, a huge uh, uh, company that uh, deals with pornography on the internet. Um, and a lot of this is, uh, these are girls that are um, uh, human traffic. They're forced to, they're put on drugs and they're, uh, they're, they're used like, like animals. And then when they die, they're thrown out and new ones are, are, are achieved. In in America, the big football, uh, the American football leagues, that's one of the highest points of human trafficking in America. Whenever there's a big Super Bowl game, they bring in these sex slaves from all different parts of the country. Well, bring it to the attention of, of the football leagues. Um, they're kind of involved uh, without even knowing it in what's happening with with human trafficking but they should be fighting this as as much as they're fighting to win the games and so i think that the first thing is in our society is is bringing awareness and then figuring out the roots of it and and what's happening and and to do this all with compassion and love and i think that's absolutely difficult i remember i was in in uh rome showing how the peace was going and I met with Sister Gabriella and I showed her how the piece uh, is, is, is developing. And she works in the trenches with, with the human traffic. And she said, you forgot one, one figure. You forgot a newborn baby. You have to put a newborn baby in it, Tim. And it just, it just almost broke my heart. And then, yes, I did research that little newborn babies are sold on the black market and traffic. But she has such uh, joy and such peace. And she's, in the, she's not in, in the cloistered studio that I am. She's dealing firsthand with these people, but she never loses her, her faith and her love. And actually, uh, she mentioned that she feels sorry for the traffickers um, because they've really lost the sense of what humanity is. And I've talked to, uh, and I've met some amazing, wonderful saints um, that are fighting human trafficking. And they always keep that hope and they always keep that love. And um, I think that's very important. But that does not mean keeping your head in the sand. That means 
looking at the problem face to face and, and actually challenging the institutions and the people to do more. Yeah, I think about this, about the hotel industry. The, um, there's things that can be done if there is that care. If there, but first, I think, quite frankly, I think that most people have no, uh, no clue, no flipping clue what's going on. And, it, and it's very hard to get people aware. I was in uh, uh, the Atlanta, uh, Georgia airport, which is America's largest airport. And uh, the airports are hubs for human trafficking. And what did I see? I saw little uh, eight by 10 posters saying, if you see something that looks suspicious, you know, call this number and alert people. If you see human trafficking, call someone, what, what's that going to do, right? Uh, that's going to do basically nothing. There has to be this deep in, uh, uh, embedded understanding of human trafficking and all of its faces. And that's why I do believe that my sculpture is that vehicle, is that weapon. I love your attention to detail. I love the attention to the hairdos, to the dresses, to the mini dresses. And also how your sculpture highlights, this is also about money. There is big money involved and, uh, and where you, you capture that in, in, in subtle and maybe not so subtle ways. But I want to move, I want to move for a minute, uh, if I may, beyond that particular sculpture, because um, the role of the artist has so much to speak to us all today. Uh, I saw in some of your references whereby young people need a challenge today, particularly um, anything to do with church. I, I read somewhere where you said they can be cynical. So in terms of challenging young people, as well as challenging my age group and our teachers and our parents, what is your message to the young people that we're hoping will grow in awareness through this program? I do believe that um, Christianity, if it's presented properly, um, people will understand the eternal truths that it holds, and in a sense, it alone holds. The idea of, of uh, our Christian morality is, in a sense, a universal morality that people hold right now, to love one another, to be kind. Um, to forgive. Uh, these are Christian ideas that peace and love are uh, the most important thing. Um, I, th I do believe that, that uh, Christianity and the Catholic Church um, should present uh, some these messages, the eternal truths of Christianity in a more distilled, hardcore manner. And I, I do believe that, that there has been, in a sense, a blind spot in the visual representation of some of these eternal truths. Um, and I, I really do believe that, that sculpture and artwork has that power um, to bring out these, these uh, scriptures in a way that people, cynical people, can see their truths. And I, I, it's, it's hard, it's difficult, but I believe that as Christians, um, we have something really special. It's our responsibility right now to work harder, to work harder, to bring the eternal truths to, uh, of Christianity, of Catholicism up to the surface so people can get it. And what, what, I, I, what I'm really sculpting for on, on most of my Christian uh, work is um, for the cynic, for the 18-year-old for the cynic that thinks uh, Christianity has nothing to offer, that it's not relevant today. And a sculpture like, like uh, uh, the human trafficking piece brings that out from under the ground, the idea that the morality of Christianity, that everyone is sacred, that everyone uh, warrants that spotlight is very important, as well as, as the other pieces that I've done. Um, artwork, I do believe is the face of our faith. And 
that has to be authentic and that has to move people today. So the Matthew 25 pieces that you mentioned, uh, the homeless Jesus, the idea that it's our spiritual duty to help the marginalized in life is an eternal truth that was brought to the world by Christianity. And what I consider in a sense, my sculptures are soldiers that are standing on guard to preserve and protect that visual representation of the hardcore truths of Christianity. And we need them in our society. We need those positive messages. And so that's what I'm doing. Timothy, we have been blessed and I have been richly blessed by your work, seeing it on screen, seeing it in reality. And so as we finish, I want to say thank you. And may you be blessed, greatly blessed, as you continue to unfold for us some of the mysteries of life in such glorious ways. Thank you so much. Many thanks to Timothy Schmoss for sharing with us how he came to create his amazing piece, let the oppressed go free. He really is a great model for us in that for him, by doing his research and through his contact with those in the front line, he was inspired to create such a powerful piece of public art. This is our hope for you, that you will find a creative way to expose human trafficking, to make visible what thrives on being invisible. Again, we hope you will find the worksheet helpful. Our final word is to thank all the members of Act to Prevent Trafficking who helped to create the Captive series, and of course to everybody who appeared in the four episodes. APT would love to get your feedback on the series and hear of any projects that are inspired by it. You can keep up to date about all of the work that APT is doing through their website, which is aptireland.org. Many thanks once again for joining us throughout the Captive series and for hearing the very important call to let the impressed go free.